Hey, it's great to be here. All right, so um, for me, this, started, this all started back in Southeast Asia. When I was 17, I took a four-month trip. I volunteered. I lived with families. This experience really shaped my worldview. It very much inspired the work I'm doing today and really awakened my understanding of the true value of food. So my obsession with keeping food out of the trash can really started in college. I remember the time I saw tray after tray after tray of perfectly edible food being dumped down the garbage disposal on my college campus. My early efforts to reduce food waste involved eating much of it myself. <laughs> I would actually eat my friend's pizza crusts, eat waste off their plates. Uh, I didn't want to see it going in the trash. Well, I gained about 25 pounds and realized I needed to come up with a better solution. <laughs> so I launched a food recovery program on campus. By my senior year, we had 45 students involved, 10 local businesses donating every single day, the school dining hall donating, which was a huge challenge, and we were helping to feed 500 people in the Bronx every day. There's programs like this all across the country, and yet these problems of hunger and food waste persist, and in fact are more heightened than ever before. 50 million Americans are food insecure. They don't have adequate access to nutrition, and yet we're throwing away almost half of all our food. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. It's a huge problem, and it's a problem we can solve, and that's what I'd like to talk about today is how we can shift this problem into a solution. But first, a little bit more about the problem. So each time food goes uneaten, all the resources that went into producing, processing, packaging, and transporting that food are wasted too. This means an incredible amount of water. 25% of all of our fresh water is being used to produce food that we throw away. This means oil. 300 million barrels of oil are being used to produce food that never gets eaten. And this means trees. We are cutting down trees all across this world to produce more food, even though we already produce enough food to feed everyone. And it's costing us a lot. It's a disaster financially. We are spending, as a nation, $750 million each year to dispose of excess food. What if businesses and municipalities were to shift just a fraction of these funds towards the recovery and redistribution of edible food instead? What if we were to invest in the creation of a professionalized food recovery service sector as an extension of our current waste management system and as an opportunity to employ thousands in the green economy? We can do this. This is the food shift vision. We believe that we can employ thousands of people across this country in the recovery, redistribution, and processing of excess food, like James in Oakland, who works for St. Vincent de Paul full-time recovering and redistributing excess food that would otherwise go to waste. Food recovery groups across this country are doing an incredible job, and they've been working for decades to not only reduce food waste, but to feed the hungry. They are providing a huge service to both the communities in which they work and to the environment. San Francisco has a program called Food Runners. Food Runners has been around for 25 years. They are moving 10 tons of food every week, 10 tons of food a week, using over 200 volunteers to make it happen. We believe that groups like Food Runners deserve to be paid. Not only are they reducing the waste disposal costs for businesses, they're reducing the cost of having to ship all that food off to some composting facility. They're feeding thousands of people and, of course, reducing the environmental impacts of wasted food. Yet most food recovery groups across this country, including food, food runners, provide a free service, receive limited financial contributions, and really depend on volunteers to operate. Obviously, this limits their ability to expand, increase impact, purchase necessary infrastructure, and ultimately, it limits their ability to tackle a crisis of this magnitude. So three main points so far. We can't rely solely on food recovery groups to solve these problems of food, food waste and hunger. They've been trying. We need to support them. We need to support them financially. We also need to explore new possibilities. How can we develop programs that can scale and that are more sustainable financially? Also, we can't be satisfied with composting. Composting is not enough. 
We need to do everything we can to keep edible food out of the compost, out of the landfill, and make sure it's feeding people first. And thirdly, we should not be satisfied with dropping off food at a soup kitchen. It's not actually solving the problem of hunger. We have an opportunity to use this incredible abundance of food to create jobs in our communities. And this is realistic. This is attainable. This is a way that we can tackle the largest component of our waste stream, food. And this is a way that we can provide jobs and move towards our zero waste targets in our cities and towns. In addition to increasing awareness about the social and environmental impacts of wasted food, this is where Food Shift is working. We're really excited and committed to work with businesses, governments, and communities to develop sustainable models that reduce waste and provide employment. We've got a few really exciting projects going on right now. We're working with Oakland Unified School District to help them recover food from their schools. Working with the Andronico's Community Markets, they've actually approached us and asked us if we could develop a fee-for-service food recovery model. Yes, they are actually willing to pay someone to come and professionally remove their unwanted food. Why? Well, it makes sense for one, we pay for trash removal and recycling removal. Why not pay for the removal of unwanted food? Um, it also will help reduce their waste disposal cost, help their company be more sustainable overall, and of course give them this added benefit in the community and the environment, which is a great marketing and branding opportunity. Something else we're exploring and really excited about is these social enterprise opportunities around utilizing excess food. Can we create jams, chutneys, sauces, breads in the community? Um, can we develop catering companies or expand the ones that already exist using some of this cosmetically imperfect but still perfectly good food? Yes, we can. And St. Vincent de Paul and other food banks are perfect partners in this kind of strategy. They already have kitchen facilities. They already are receiving a large amount of food. And most importantly, they're already working with the group of people that need the jobs the most. This is what we're excited about working on. And this is where we, I believe that we as a whole should be focusing our energies. We can do this. And yes, a lot of this is going to involve innovation and trying things out and perhaps failing along the way. But there are also models out there that we can look at. And DC Central Kitchen is a perfect example of that. I wish I had more time to talk about their program. But they have been doing this for years, 25 years in DC. They have been reducing food waste on a massive scale, feeding hungry, putting people to work, providing these jobs, and generating revenue. We can do this. We're really excited about doing this. We believe, and I'm sure you do too, that food does not belong in landfills, and people do not belong in soup lines. We can use this abundance of food that we have in our communities to create jobs, reduce waste, and ultimately shift this problem into a solution. Thank you.